This is Echo at Africa coming to you from Nigeria, Kenya and Berlin. I am Neil Taigbe welcoming you to our environment program. My colleague Joy Bira joins us from Kenya. Hello Joy. Hello there in T and yes we are coming to you from the Uhuru Park here in Nairobi, Kenya and this is the show that gives you the latest on how to keep your environment green in a clean and sustainable fashion. This is what we have coming up for you on the show today. We go to Nigeria to show you how environmental protection can be a money spinner. The idea in question is turning out to be a big success. Did you know that trees also have unique genetic fingerprints, just like humans? More on how DNA profiling can be used to track down illegal loggers in a minute. And palm oil production has a reputation for being an environmental menace. But in Sierra Leone, a project set up by small farmers is proving that this doesn't have to be the case. In Africa, solar power offers almost boundless potentials. Shangwa Adaju is the founder of a renewable energy firm that is tapping into that. The Nigerian has introduced what he calls a pay-as-you-go solar business model to help small companies cope with unreliable power supplies. And you know what it means? It seems to work. This is how Samuel Chukuka typically starts his working day. He runs a barber shop in Lagos, which is powered by a private generator. The state supply is not sufficient. In his opinion, the power holding company of Nigeria is failing the densely populated city and its businesses. It is my first customer for today. Uh, the challenges we have in this area is Nepa. I spend up to seven to eight thousand naira on a weekly basis to power my generator. So there's noise, there's smoke. I wish government should put a stop to this Nepal problem. The government has been promising to upgrade the power sector for 20 years, but still only half of the population in Nigeria has access to electricity. Shagun Adaju saw a need and came up with a more reliable energy solution, solar cells. Based on the business model, pay-as-you-go solar, he targets small and medium-sized enterprises. Today, they account for nearly half of Nigeria's GDP, so the potential is huge. So our vision is to, in the next four to five years, displace over one million generators in Nigeria, starting with Lagos. So we partner with uh, Baba's Association, uh, to deploy solar solutions for their businesses. Barber shops in particular have a lot to gain from making the change. Plagued by constant power cuts, Peter Obina struggles to keep his customers. When the opportunity arose, he decided to switch to solar power. I didn't find it so much difficult on the floor and the gen and all that. And my customers are even like appreciating because no more noise, everything is just cool. At times they would just be like wondering that, how did it go like, is there Nepa here or something? But I was like, wow, just solar. Shagun Adaju travels around the city looking to convince more barbers to swap their generators for solar panels. We put solar panel on your rooftop and it powers at least two clippers, powers your four or five light bulbs, two fans, I charge your mobile phones, and then there's no noise, there's no pollution, your customers are happy, you are, you know, you are doing um, good business and you are saving money. He explains to Samuel Chukuka that a solar panel can last up to 20 years and he'll no longer have to buy fuel to run his generator. I think I love this idea of solar direct. It's going to solve the problem of Nepal issue in Nigeria. I will give it a try. Shagun also sells solar panels to other small and medium enterprises. Customers don't have to pay for the solar panels up front, but can pay them off in increments of $10 to $15 a month. Then on a weekly basis, they pay as little as 3000 um, or 5000 Naira. And within 12 to 18 months, they have fully paid, and then uh, we transfer ownership of this solution uh, to them. Shagun's pay-as-you-go solar business won't replace a state-run power grid, but he has managed to win over a lot of customers with his model in Lagos. 200 barbers have already signed up. 
Our seas have become a plastic graveyard full of debris like plastic bottles, tires or synthetic materials. A new initiative in the United Kingdom is combining the use of drones, tidal studies and navigation technology to try and work out where the millions of tons of plastic dumped in the sea end up. Let's see how they are doing their bit for the environment. Did you know that drones can combat pollution? Every year, more than 8 million tons of plastic are dumped into the oceans. Environmentalists Ellie McKay and Peter Kohler are teaching drones to detect plastic debris on British beaches. More than 30,000 images taken by the drone are then uploaded to a web portal called Zooniverse. Anyone anywhere in the world can look at the images and tag bits of plastic. The idea is to teach the drone to pinpoint plastic trash on its own. Eventually, it should be able to differentiate between things like a stone and a bottle cap. In the future, the drone will be able to determine how much plastic there is on a beach. And that will make coordinating cleanup efforts more efficient, not just in the UK, but worldwide. Do you like that? If you're also doing your bit, tell us about it. Visit our website or send us a tweet. Hashtag doing your bit. We share your stories.